Hello, welcome back to the channel. Uh, hopefully this video isn't going to be too dark. I actually had to close the shades behind me because otherwise it was just a whitewash of light. Seeds, we're going to talk about seeds today. It's that time of year, everybody's buying seeds. Uh, if you're new to gardening, seeds are an excellent way to get into gardening because you grow something from virtually nothing and they're inexpensive. So that's a huge plus right there. Uh, I purchased seeds from many a places this year and I'm going to go over uh, the three big orders I did. Now, uh, just, to cl just to make something clear or clarify, I'm not or I haven't turned around and so last year I purchased probably thousands of dollars worth of plants. Not really thousands, probably a thousand maybe. But I did buy a lot of plants. Now you get these bare, typically bare root. You go online to catalogs or you get these like pamphlets in mailers or something for all sorts of beautiful flowers. And they usually come to you as a, what's well, known as a bare root or um, as a small plant and you potted, potted them up or you put them directly into the ground and they grow and they look wonderful. And they range anywhere from price from $5 all the way up to $50 depending upon the plant that you're looking at. Uh, if you're going for trees or shrubs, then they're even more expensive up to, God, I don't even want to know. Anyways, <laughs> uh, seeds though are a lot more inexpensive. And this year I decided to try to do a lot of my gardening or a lot of my plants from seeds. Now this goes for the vegetable as well as the flowers. Now I, I will probably buy some plants uh, either from nurseries or big box store, but again, not in the volume that I did last year. Um, and part of that is just to save money. I'd rather take some of that money and invest in other areas. And if you watch this channel for any uh, period of time, you know that I've also purchased um, bare root plants or trees or shrubs from uh, American Horticultural Society or something. Hold on, I have it here someplace, I think. No, that's Gardeners. No, I think it's AHS. Or, Ar no, Arbor Day Foundation. Whew, dummy. Arbor Day Foundation. <laughs> I've purchased plants from Arbor Day Foundation. Uh, you get the small bare root plants, um, and then you could plant them out either into pots, bigger pots than they usually ship in, or directly out into the garden, depending upon the time of year. And then you get a full-size tree or bush or shrub or whatever it is you purchase from them after a period of time. And they're relatively inexpensive. Uh, anywhere, I would say, sub $20 for 90% of their stuff. Uh, $5 apple trees or, you know, things like that. Uh, again, you're getting a very small plant. It's bare root nine times out of ten. Um, and that's where you save a lot of money. You also, if you, you if you join and make a, like a five or ten dollar contribution uh, to the Arbor Day Foundation, that's you get even more of a discount from them. Um, and then again, you save money that way. Small cost, worthwhile uh, endeavor thing. Foundation, yeah. Anyways, uh, so let's talk about the uh, seeds that are purchased year to year. Now, uh, I'm going to start off with a company I purchased from from before. Not sponsored. Uh, high mowing organic seeds. I believe they're in like Maine or Vermont or something. Either way, they have organic seeds. So these are seeds that are not genetically modified, um, and they're grown on their farm and harvested on their farm, etc. And I didn't get a lot from them this year because I purchased from other sources, multiple sources. Uh, but I got uh, some uh, time. Uh, giant Italian Parsley, Genovese Basil, and Green Finger Cucumber. Now these are all um, vegetables or herbs that I've grown before and I've used the high mowing organic seeds. I also have some seeds left over from last year and the year before which I will try to use first before I crack into these. But high mowing organic seeds, if you um, are looking to buy seeds, they're a good uh, place. Prices aren't too bad. So, good seeds. Uh, the next one I'm going to do is, yeah, that was, uh, is Burpee. Now, Burpee I purchased from before, and these are a mix of flowers and uh, herbs or vegetables. So I have 
Echinacea marry me. I'll try to put up pictures here too if uh, I remember or can fill that in. <laughs> Echinacea marry me. Uh, sweet basil. I started growing that last year. Very nice. I don't know how many seeds I have left, so I bought more seeds. Looking at the package here, it looks like 500 seeds to the package. So I probably have a lot of seeds left there from last year. This is a problem often with gardeners, or if you get into gardening, you get the beautiful catalogs during the winter time, and you're like, do I have them? I don't know if I have them. I'll buy another pack. It's only $3. And then you have three or four packs of basil seeds. So, <laughs> uh, rosemary. I didn't have any rosemary. Sunflower forest mix. Now, I had this grand idea in my head at the time that I was going to turn around and make like a hedgerow of sunflowers. And that was going to be wonderful. Um, and I still might do that, although I'm debating whether that was a smart move or not. Because apparently deer love to eat sunflowers. And I have a pack of deer that roam the neighborhood. So <laughs> come the warmer uh, months when the plants would be growing, the sunflowers would be growing. They may be safe because the deer would uh, typically tend to go elsewhere outside of the area where I'm at. Maybe they go out to the cornfields that are just north of me and the bean fields and they eat up there. So either way, I have now a pack of sunflower, uh, sun forest mix. Because again, I was going to do like a hedgerow of sunflowers. So yeah, it's great ideas. Coreopsis, Ruby Kiss, uh, Sage. Lavender, English, English lavender. I'm going to really try to grow the lavenders from seed uh, for numerous reasons. And there's a thousand seeds in this packet. And one of them being is that if you go to a, even a big box store, you get a lavender plant. It's like $5. Well, if you want to do a lot of lavender, like I do, um, well, five turns into 20, which turns into 50, which turns into 100. Nah, so it's... $3 pack of seeds, 1,000 seeds. If I get 50 plants out of that, I'd be thrilled, and it's well worth the $3. And then giant white moonflower. Now, my last year in New York, uh, 20, 2020, I grew uh, moonflower over an arbor, and I'm going to get an arbor this year for the rose garden because I, I'm getting a David Austin climbing rose. I can't remember which rose that is. I will talk about that when those rose bushes come in. But I'm getting a climbing rose to go up and over an arbor. So I don't know how fast it's going to grow. Uh, I'm not that experienced with uh, climbing roses. But I don't suspect that it's going to grow more than three to five feet the first year. And the arbor that I'm getting looking to get would be about seven foot high or so. So what I'm thinking is, is on one side of the arbor, maybe do the moonflower growing up and over the arbor, and that will pretty much cover the whole uh, thing that first year. They put out these giant, beautiful white flowers uh, during the uh, evening hours, and then they close up during the day. It'll be fun and interesting to see how they perform down here in North Carolina. Okay, uh, the next order I got, which is probably going to be most, if not all, my veg this year, uh, I got from Gurney's. Now, Gurney's... Okay, Gurney's sent me a catalog specifically for southern vegetables. Now, when I moved down here from New York, no idea about growing season, the heat, humidity, the bugs, mildew, etc. So, Gurney's apparently turn around and they have um, catalogs specifically for, I guess, different regions and growing areas. So they sent me one, knowing that I was I previously ordered from them, and knowing that I was in growing zone 8A, sent me a catalog for southern vegetables. These are um, plants that have been tested in the south, and they apparently do fairly well, so I purchased a boatload of them. Uh, why? Because I could. <laughs> so I got a Mexican sunflower from them. That pretty much grows everywhere. It's almost like weed. 30 seeds, I think, for like three dollars uh i don't if i get 30 plants i get 30 plants so i got three plants for three dollars they'd be a dollar a plant that's fabulous but mexican sunflower plant i tried growing it late last year the plants only got yay tall because it was the very very end of the year and then frost hit um but hopefully i'm going to try this year to um 
grow them and who knows maybe i'll do a hedgerow of them because apparently deer don't like mexican sunflower so maybe i'll do like a hedgerow of mexican sunflower that'd be pretty cool uh, the next is a candy hybrid onion it's supposed to be like a sweet onion i'm going to give it a whirl i tried growing walla wallas last year i think i'll try to grow them again this year because i should still have some seeds left over i still have a couple of plants out in the uh, vegetable garden but I don't know what they're going to be or what they're going to, I don't know. I'm going to have to check them out in the spring. I figured they hadn't popped above the soil kind of, and the, the stalks hadn't gone brown and died over yet. So maybe if I left them in the ground until the springtime, then they would grow to full maturity. We'll find out in the spring once I go back out to the vegetable garden. Uh, in the meantime, I have Americana Hybrid Cucumber. Uh, super snack sunflower. Apparently they're supposed to be very good seeds for eating. So I'm going to try to grow those. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. San Vicente hybrid tomato. Um, don't know. Going to try to give it a whirl. Apparently it's supposed to be very, uh, good for again, the, the South here. Uh, hybrid sugar snacks carrot. I, I keep trying to grow carrots. I've very rarely grown successful carrots. It's a weird thing. I, I don't know. I have carrots out there right now that have been sitting in the ground for probably way too long. If my experience, if you let a carrot sit in the ground for too long, the something happens to the carrot and it starts tasting very soapy and it's not very good or edible. Rattlesnake watermelon. Now I did grow bush sugar baby watermelons last year. I got uh, two good ones out of it. So I got two good watermelons out of it. Um, I think I have some seeds left over from that. I'll probably try to grow that, and I may try to grow these uh, rattlesnake watermelons as well. I have limited space, uh, even though I have a large uh, vegetable garden, but, you know, uh, and maybe I'll put these watermelons out into some of the unused spaces um, next to the vegetable garden, and maybe try to, you know, because again, something like a watermelon or a pumpkin takes up a lot of uh, space, so maybe I'll try that. Uh, and then champion radish. Now I've grown cherry bell radishes and I think I have some seeds left over on that one. And I've grown German giants. I like those. But uh, I figured let me try another one. Champion. Give it a whirl. Uh, and then also I have these very large packets because these beans are very large. These seeds are very large. Bush bean early contender. Apparently it's supposed to be a fast growing uh, bush bean, so I will give them a try in, in the springtime because I love myself some bush beans, um, string beans you might call them, and uh, we'll see what happens. Sweet pick shell peas. The next one is uh, hybrid, uh, hybrid silver queen sweet corn. Now that apparently grows somewhere down here because my wife and I were buying that in the uh, local uh, stores and markets. And delicious. Uh, Silver Queen corn, absolutely delicious. Super sweet, lovely. So I'm going to try to grow some myself. Now, I did grow corn last year, and if again, if you watch the videos, then you know it didn't turn out so hot. Um, and part of that was my fault in the timing of the corn. And we had rain and the heat, and if you don't pluck the corn at the right time, then what happened was it got... Um, uh, moldy and mildew moldy on the inside of the corn um and it just it ruins the corn so yeah we're, we're gonna try corn again and try a different variety and then uh of course another variety here called uh of sweet corn called gotta have it it's also a hybrid uh now i still have the corn that i bought bought last year i don't know if i'll use that again i have two different types of varieties of corn and i think the secret to or this uh if you want to grow a successful corn the secret then is to have sort of lots of corn. You only get so many ears per stalk. So you have to use a lot of space in order to grow that. Um, I don't know if I'll grow both varieties this year. If you if you buy seeds, and, and I'm, I'm a total novice gardener. I think I'm going into year five of gardening. So, you know, you could take, take what I say with a grain of salt. And maybe if you're more experienced than you've grown corns before um, or you've bought seeds before, I'm getting to a point here. <laughs> These seeds will last a couple of years. Um, if you keep seeds in a cool, uh, dry environment, uh, some people even go to the extreme of putting them in a refrigerator or even a freezer. I wouldn't do that. The freezer portion, maybe the refrigerator, but... Um, 
seeds do last a few years. So if you buy something this year and you find you don't have the space to plant it out, or um, again, I may not have the space to plant it out, or I just may become too overwhelmed with other things, I can always try these, you know, some of this stuff next year because the seeds will still be good. Now, anything really past uh, two to three years, the seeds will start to uh, dry out, I guess. Uh, they, they, they no longer become as viable. So that's fine. Um, and actually, I, like I said, I have, before, I have um, two containers. Here, let me show you. I have uh, two of these metal containers here. Uh, one here, one off camera. I only have so many arms. <laughs> I purchased these from uh, Gardener Supply. And they got all sorts of... So uh, before I do take these seeds that I purchased uh, recently and put them into here. I'm actually going to go through both these. I have one labeled flowers, one labeled vegetables. In the vegetables I also have my herbs. Uh, I'm going to go through both of them because I know I have seeds that are three, maybe even four years old. So I'm going to go purge those. I'll toss those out and theoretically you could, some of them may be viable. So let's say you had a hundred four-year-old seeds. You could do a germination test with let's say 10 seeds. I've seen this online where people do this. Uh, you put 10 seeds on a wet paper towel and see which ones. So if you get one out of 10 that germinate, then theoretically out of those 100, you would get 10 seeds that germinate. If my math is correct, maybe. If my math isn't correct, leave a comment below. I'm sure I'm doing it wrong. I'm terrible at math. <laughs> but basically the older the seed, the less viable it is and the less germination you're going to get. You can still use them, but less germinating. So I will go through and basically anything three years older, um, I will toss. I will also probably toss a couple of varieties in here, which I may never grow or use. What I've mentioned up to this point is mostly herbs and vegetables with some flowers scattered throughout. But I found a website. Actually, I didn't find them. They found me. A uh, It was a catalog called Select Seeds. Uh, I'm looking now to see, uh, the website is selectseeds.com, and they have a lot of seeds and plants, but they have a lot of seeds of flowers. If you go to Gurney's or uh, Johnny Seeds or High Mowing, they're going to have echinaceas and they'll have a few other common flowers, things that basically sell well, but they won't have anything too elaborate because their main uh, energy and focus is focused mo mostly on um, herbs and vegetables. Those are the big sellers. Now, typically, if you want a specific type of plant, you basically buy it from a grower online or even a nursery big box as a plant. But again, you could spend, you could go to Lowe's and spend $20 on a big Coreopsis, but that's $20 spent as opposed to going to this this um, store, Select Seeds, and you can, for instance, uh, I have a zinnia here called Jazzy Red. That's, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my email. <laughs> I'm looking at my email. So I ordered a zinnia called Jazzy Red, and there's, I believe, 50 seeds in the packet, and it's $4. Now, let's say I only get half of those to germinate. I'm getting 25 plants that will eventually get big, and you know, Coreopsis grows fairly quickly, for... Um, four dollars if I get 25 plants for four dollars that's that's gold so uh, let me review the plants that I uh, the seeds that I bought so zinnia jazzy red um, an agastache called heather queen uh, let's see another agastache called licorice white uh, let's see a carnation called Chab chabod's giant Ben, ben, Benega, Benega, I'm probably mispronouncing it. I'll try to throw the name with the flower, <laughs> picture of the flower. Um, I've never seen a carnation seed on any of the other catalogs that I've mentioned. So again, in selectseeds.com, they have varieties and, and types here, which is just incredible. A Cleome called Cherry Queen. Cleome? 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 I, I mispronounce these words. I have such a hard time to even just saying the English word, let alone the Latin name. Uh, Snapdragon Rocket Orchid. I was on the fence about getting Snapdragons. I've grown Snapdragons before, but I figured it's uh, $4 for, again, uh, probably like 100 seeds or so. Uh, I got more Mexican Sunflower. 
because you can never have enough Mexican sunflower. Uh, another sunflower called Claret. Zinnia Beninaries, Giant Beninaries, Beninaries. I have heart, such a hard time. Giant lime. Um, so it's a lime green zinnia. It's wonderful. Uh, Spanish flag. That one I got for the bluebirds, not bluebirds, the hummingbirds, I believe. If I remember reading it correctly, that one may turn around and, um, ooh, I just got a notification that my order has shipped. Woohoo! <laughs> if I remember correctly, that one, um, they recommend growing in a pot, and if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to need a little trellis for that. So I will try to either buy or make a trellis for that. Maybe I'll do something with bamboo stakes and string, but... I'll put it on the back deck. The hummingbirds go towards the back deck where my wife usually puts out a hummingbird feeder and it'll be wonderful. Uh, globe thistle blue glow. Blazing star. I don't know what type of flower that is. Um, if I do remember, I'll get a name. <laughs> Heliopsis summer nights. Now, for instance, I bought a Heliopsis at a local nursery last year and I think it was around $15 to $20. It grew. It was wonderful. Had beautiful flowers for months on end. It was great. It's gone dormant. I don't know if it'll, it'll come back, if it'll survive the winter, and if it'll come back. If it comes back, fabulous, it'll grow. But that's $20 that was spent on a plant. Now, granted, the you know, plant is the size. But again, for $3.50, if I can get a packet of 50 or 100, um, and those, I don't know how many in that one. Let's see, 22, okay. So there's 22 seeds in that packet. For three dollars and fifty cents. If again I get ten germinate, hopefully I get more than ten. But if I get ten that germinate, three dollars and fifty cents you can't beat it. So there you go. Heliopsis summer nights, uh, Lobella cardinal flower. I don't know what that is. Uh, and then of course wild cone flower. Love cone flowers. They're very simple. They're very easy, and you know they're they're very hardy. Very hardy. I have yet to kill a cone flower. So. <laughs> So that's a majority of all the seeds that I've uh, bought this year. I think I've gotten a few others from a couple other websites. I can't remember off the top of my head. And, and as these catalogs start to pop in, I may buy onesies, twosies. But again, the majority of my plants this year will hopefully all be grown from seed. Uh, if you've been watching the channel for some time, you know I have a greenhouse coming hopefully in February, maybe March. We'll have to see how the timelines go. But I may even wind up growing seeds in there before it winds up getting too hot, probably March, April, May, May, I would presume. April, May may be too hot inside the greenhouse. We'll have to wait and see. But if I get the greenhouse built quick enough and soon enough, then I will be starting and growing some seeds out there. Otherwise, I'll be back in the garage under my seed starting station, which I'll do a uh, refresher video or a little video on hopefully soon because I have to give it a little bit of an overhaul and prepare it for this year's growing, which some of you already started seeds, um, especially if you're in the, in the north, uh, you start your seeds, some, some of you start your seeds for things that take a little longer to uh, develop. There are certain types of flowers or plants that uh, take a very long time to sort of mature up, so you would start them now, so this way, come you know uh, mid to late April, depending upon your growing zone, when it's okay to start planting outside, you already have a little plant and it's, it's good to go. It's off to the races. I'm going to be starting my seeds here uh, in growing zone 8A probably um, early to mid-February, maybe even late February. And the reason being is because there's many other things going on and my growing zone, my growing season is much longer. We didn't experience our first hard frost, I don't believe, until the end of November. There were a couple of light frosts, which really didn't phase many of the plants too much but once we had our first hard frost then that was it for you know 90 percent of the um of the stuff that was growing and that didn't really happen until the end of november which was which is great so i my growing season is much much longer and i will be planting out i'll be doing my seeds starting a little later and that allows me more time to do other things there's a lot of other work that needs to get done in the garden uh I'm going to start, um, again, greenhouse coming up, seed station coming up. I'm going to be cutting down a few small trees, and I'll be showing you what I'm going to do with that. They'll be actually be going out into the rose garden. There's rose garden work, uh, prep work that needs to get done. There's, is, there's so much, I mean, again, 
I'm building a garden here in Growing Zone 8A, uh, Eastern North Carolina. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Follow along with all my misadventures. See how the garden builds and develops. Uh, and then uh, what, what works, what doesn't work, I will share all that with you. I have had plenty of failures. Hopefully I have more successes. Uh, and then maybe you guys can share with me some of the things that have worked and haven't worked for you in your various growing areas as well. That's going to wrap it up for today. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Check out my Instagram page. And I'm going to catch you all in the next one. Bye-bye.